Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back. In the previous video, we have mentioned all the required tools and right now we are just ready to start creating our project and writing some code. So basically, uh, the first thing, this is the GitHub repo of the project. Right now, it's all going to be documented, but for now you can uh, just clone this into your, uh, into your local machine. And uh, this is the first thing, you can do that whatever you want. You can use the Visual Studio by hitting clone repository over here, or you can use the command line. Or I'm going. I'm, I'm using basically the Git Kraken tool, so I can do that. Um, any tool works. Even Git Kraken works for this one. You don't need to buy a license. You can use the free version. Um, <clears throat> we have installed the Azure Cosmos DB emulator. Actually, if you install the Cosmos DB emulator and then if you search and then just when you open this one, wait for a minute and then you are going to see this web portal, which is basically an emulator for the Azure Cosmos DB that support the SQL API where we can create a database or a container and we can link for that fully locally without the need for anything. And uh, we have already checked if the uh, Azure function is installed. If you run the command func, you should be ready to go over here if you wanna follow using the, the command line that also works. I mentioned some of the documentations uh, in the description box. And uh, if you run also the Azure storage emulator if you run the azure storage emulator and here we have the azure storage explorer those two tools this one you can link it for any azure subscription that you have but at the same time you can actually uh, if you are new for that and you install the azure storage emulator azure storage emulator just like that if you open this one it's already open on my side so after that you can click on open connected dialog if you are not already connected and pick local storage emulator just hit next next and you are done and here just pick a display name for my side i've called it a uh, local storage so if you open a storage account i have an emulator over here where you can see blob queues and tables which is what we need actually we're going to use those two this is all what we need so right now i will open up this project and i'll say create a new project and uh, what I will be doing is basically I will create an Azure Functions application. You can create that using Visual Studio, as I've said, or you can create that using the uh, uh, the, 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 the func tools, basically. So, what I will do that through the Visual Studio. Let's hit next, and let me pick the location. the source over here and I will call the solution will be called aka expenses tracker but this one the project will be called aka expenses tracker dot functions maybe I will rename that later but for now I think dot functions is is good or let's call it dot server dot functions and this we're going to represent the server side of the project or the back end of the project and then we, we will call the client like because we will have a placer components library and dot now project and for the server the same you're going to have multiple projects like the data repository models and stuff like that so this is all that you need so let's hit next and uh, very good so by default it, it will ask us to run a function so we're going to say okay create the first function as a HTTP trigger, uh, make sure that you are on the uh, .NET 6 version, and that's it, create. Okay. I will show you right now in a second if you wanna create the same thing, but using uh, the Azure Function Core tools, how this could happen, and actually you can, you can call, um, let me open a folder over here, open a folder in the desktop and I'm going to create a new folder uh, test and then I will open the CMD here just like that call func then call func init which is from initialize and then this actually going to ask you to define the runtime okay I need .NET then the language C sharp Here we go. And actually it has created that project for you. And as you can see, this is a CS project. 
you can open your Visual Studio solutions and add reference for this project. And if you want to add a function, we're going to see that throughout the code. But for now, Visual Studio has created something for us. And as you can see, we have this one available for, for us, which is the basic function called function one, where we can pass um, hello for it, or we can pass a name and it's going to print that. And the type of the function is get or post. Throughout the course, we are going to understand all of this stuff very, very well. But for now, let's, uh, let's build this project and run this function just to make sure that everything is going fine. And uh, we can just build on top of that. So basically, let me make the code just a little bit bigger. OK, so it has been built successfully. Um, I will run it through Visual Studio. So I will always use Visual Studio plus the Azure uh, function core tool. So you can basically follow with, with both. It, it's OK. So right now it's running the Azure functions project. In the next video, you're going to understand the, the basics of the Azure function projects, what it contains and the files and stuff like that. But here we go. For our Azure Functions application, we have this URL. And if I copy this URL and I go to the browser, I paste it over here and they just open. Actually, the browser make a GET request. So here we go. This HTTP triggers function executed successfully. Pass a name in the query string or the request body for a personalized response. Okay, let's do that. Same name equals AK and hit enter. Hello, OK, this is an HTTP triggered function executed successfully. And if we look at that, we can see some logs going on here, right? So this is amazing. This is our first Azure Functions project. And um, right now we can build on top of that. So basically, that's amazing. The, la the last thing I want to mention before I start creating other projects is just if I want to run this project through the Azure Functions core tool. So basically, one more time, open the CMD. You can call .NET build if the project is not built already and then uh, after it's built successfully just call uh, let me make the code a bit bigger okay just like that it has been built successfully and call the function uh, the command func start and this will actually give you the same thing as visual studio does so this is all what we need to talk about for now that's Okay, here we go, let's hit allow access. And this is it, our function applications is actually running right now, just waiting for the URL, here we go. And we are just good to go. The same thing is going to happen and we can just continue normally. So let's close the project and close that. We are going to use Visual Studio most of the time. So <clears throat> I'm going to create a folder over here just to like server and the client just to separate them uh, those are not physical folders those are just like logical folder in visual studio or called like solution folders that actually doesn't have a physical representation in the file system now just drag this one to over here because on the server i will have like some models and repositories and stuff like that i'm going to create in the next session and we have the shared project that's going to leave here which should be shared among the client and the server and this is the power of using dotnet because right now you are going to write the functions the azure functions the cloud services and everything using dotnet plus we are going to write the android ios and the windows application all using dotnet so the same dto that you are going to create is going to be shared across all those services so we have done nothing special for this session let me make a comment for this so basically i'll call it create and initialize the solution with a functions project. Here we go. So right now you have access for this, you can clone it and you should be good to go. So let's in the next session create the required project that we are going to build on top of this. We are not going to touch the client for now, everything is going to be server and um, yeah, we'll talk about that in details in the next session. Thank you so much and see you.